Hello, students. Today, I'm going to talk to you about a drug called Ricetronate, which is used to treat osteoporosis and Paget's disease of bone. I will explain what this drug is, how it works, how it is made, how it is classified, how it is used, and what are its benefits and risks. I will also give you some tips on how to counsel your patients who use this drug and answer their questions and concerns. Ricetronate is a type of medication that belongs to a class of drugs called bisphosphonates. Bisphosphonates have two phosphonic acid groups attached to a carbon atom. Ricetronate also has a hydroxyl group and a pyridine ring attached to the same carbon atom. The chemical formula of ricetronate is C7H11NO7P2, which means it has 7 carbon atoms, 11 hydrogen atoms, 1 nitrogen atom, 7 oxygen atoms, and 2 phosphorus atoms. The molecular weight of ricetronate is 305.10 grams per mole. Ricetronate works by binding to bone and inhibiting osteoclasts, the cells that break down bone. This reduces bone resorption and increases bone density. This helps to prevent or treat osteoporosis, a condition that causes the bones to become thin and weak. Osteoporosis can lead to fractures, pain, and disability. Ricetronate also helps treat Paget's bone disease, a disorder that causes the bones to become soft and deformed. By normalizing bone turnover, ricetronate improves bone quality and reduces the risk of complications from Paget's disease. Ricetronate is synthesized from 3-pyridyl acetic acid, which is a derivative of pyridine, a heterocyclic aromatic compound with a nitrogen atom in the ring. The synthesis process involves four main steps. First, 3-pyridyl acetic acid is converted into an Illinois salt by reacting with phosphorus acid and phosphorus trichloride in methanol. Second, the Illinois salt is hydrolyzed into 3-pyridyl acetic acid hydrazide by reacting with water in a microwave reactor. Third, the hydrazide is cyclized into rhizdronic acid by reacting with phosphorus trichloride in toluene. Fourth, Rhizdronic acid is neutralized into ricetronate sodium hemipentahydrate by reacting with sodium hydroxide in water. The synthesis process does not use any organic solvents other than methanol and toluene, which makes it safe and environmentally friendly superscript 1. Ricetronate belongs to the third generation of bisphosphonates, which are more potent and selective than the first and second generation ones. The first generation bisphosphonates include etadronate and teludronate, which have simple side chains and are less effective in inhibiting bone resorption. The second generation bisphosphonates include pamidronate and alandronate, which have amino or nitrogen containing side chains and are more effective in inhibiting bone resorption. The third generation bisphosphonates include ibandronate and ricetronate, which have heterocyclic or pyridine containing side chains and are more effective in inhibiting bone resorption superscript 2. The fourth generation bisphosphonates include zoledronate, which has a nitrogen containing heterocyclic ring and is the most potent in selective bisphosphonate superscript 3. Ricetronate comes in two forms, immediate release tablet and delayed release tablet. Both forms are taken by mouth, but they have different instructions on how to take them. For example, you should not take ricetronate if you cannot sit upright or stand for at least 30 minutes after taking the medicine. You should also avoid eating or drinking anything other than plain water before and after taking ricetronate. 
You should follow your doctor's directions carefully when using this medication. Risedronate can cause some side effects, such as heartburn, diarrhea, indigestion, stomach pain, back pain, joint pain, muscle pain, or flu-like symptoms. Some of these side effects may be mild and go away on their own. However, some side effects may be serious and require medical attention. For example, risedronate can cause ulcers or sores in the esophagus, which can lead to difficulty or pain when swallowing, chest pain, or coughing up blood. Risedronate can also cause severe bone, joint, or muscle pain, which may indicate a rare but serious condition called osteonecrosis of the jaw or a typical femoral fracture. One of the rarest and most serious side effects of risedronate is osteonecrosis of the jaw, ONJ, which is a condition where the jaw bone dies and becomes infected. This can cause pain, swelling, numbness, loose teeth, and difficulty chewing or speaking. The risk of ONJ is higher in people who have dental problems, cancer, or are taking other medications that affect bone metabolism. ONJ can be treated with antibiotics, surgery, or hyperbaric oxygen therapy, but it may not be reversible in some cases. Another rare but serious side effect of risedronate is atypical femoral fracture, AFF, which is a type of fracture that occurs in the thigh bone without any trauma or injury. This can cause pain, swelling, difficulty walking, or a limp. The risk of AFF is higher in people who have been taking bisphosphonates for a long time, more than five years, have low vitamin D levels, or have other medical conditions that affect bone health. AFF can be treated with surgery, metal rods, or plates to stabilize the bone, but it may take longer to heal than normal fractures. Unfortunately, there is no definitive answer to the question of how long these rare side effects of risedronate last or whether the muscle and bone pain ever go away. This may depend on various factors that are unique to each individual. Therefore, the best way to get more personalized and accurate advice is to consult with a doctor or pharmacist who can review the patient's medical history, condition, and treatment plan. They may also suggest alternative treatments or medications for osteoporosis that have fewer or less severe side effects. Risedronate may interact with other medications, supplements, or foods. Therefore, you should tell your doctor about all the products you use, including prescription and over-the-counter drugs, vitamins, minerals, herbal products, and dietary items. You should also avoid taking risedronate with certain medications that can affect its absorption or effectiveness, such as antacids, calcium supplements, iron supplements, or aspirin. You should also avoid drinking alcohol or smoking while using risedronate, as these can worsen your bone health. Risedronate is a prescription drug that requires a doctor's supervision. You should not use it without consulting your doctor first. You should also follow your doctor's advice on how to use it safely and effectively. You should take risedronate exactly as prescribed and do not change your dose or stop taking it without your doctor's approval. You should also have regular checkups and tests to monitor your bone density and blood levels of calcium and other minerals. You should also report any side effects or problems while using risedronate to your doctor. As healthcare providers, you have an important role in educating and counseling your patients who use risedronate. You should explain to them what risedronate is, how it works, how it is made, how it is classified, how it is used, and what are its benefits and risks. 
you should also answer their questions and concerns honestly and clearly. You should also teach them how to prevent or manage the side effects of risedronate by following proper instructions or using other medications or remedies. You should also encourage them to take other measures to protect their bones, such as eating a balanced diet of calcium and vitamin D, exercising regularly, avoiding falls and injuries, and quitting smoking and drinking alcohol. By doing these things, you can help your patients improve their bone health and prevent fractures with risedronate. You can also help them enjoy a better quality of life with stronger bones. Thank you for listening to my talk on Risedronate. I hope you learned something new today. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback please feel free to contact Bijan AI. I rock the world with my AI. I'm the best there is, no one's better than me. I'm the king of